everyone. Welcome to I What Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. I am so excited for today's podcast episode. We're going to be talking about how to sound things off and lighting up your events with Sergio Olmo, who's the owner of an exclusive party group. And Sergio, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I was really excited about coming because I'm like, we're going to laugh. We're going to have some fun for sure. We're going to be completely just off the charts. Off the Richter. (laughs) So I'm excited. So Sergio, tell us. To those of you that do not know you, a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm Sergio Olmo. I do uh, run Exclusive Party Group, which is part of uh, a family of labels, so different brands. Uh, As far as uh, DJ, we have DJ So Pro. We have uh, also an Oro Loca department, which we open, which is Oro Loca Shows and More. Not to say that we don't have experience in Oro Loca. We definitely have a lot. We just started our own brand internally. Um, We also have uh, decorations, uh, one-stop decor. Um, which we also launched last year to accommodate whatever decoration needs. We have Abdiel Cespedes Photography, which I think you've you've met him before. Uh, Abdiel Cespedes is probably one of the best photographers in South Florida. Uh, and it's not just my opinion, it's, it's facts. But he's, he's really, really good. Um, he focuses a lot on events, event y- photography. Yes, on the DJ side, we, we have a, that's a fusion between photo booth and DJ. Um, they go in, they go, they go together because during the party, while you're DJing you, that, that extra entertainment just goes well with, with photo booth. Um, even though our, our photographer really wanted that, that, that side of it. Um, but it was already there. Yeah. Um, and then everything else, uh, the, the event planning side of it, which is the, which is like what exclusive party group is basically it's like, Hey, what do you need? I got you. Um, that was, that was the last, the last one, because at the end, once we build each department up with the right person to, to be passionate about what they do, um, then we're ready to start the group. And that's really where, where this is take, taken off for us um, as a whole because we can literally offer the client anything they need. And each, like a one-stop shop. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And then once you get to the point where the client's like, okay, well, uh, you know, who's going to run the show? You know, that's where Exclusive Party Group comes in because we, we already know how things go it, together to make the event a success. I want to say, yeah. I was gonna say perfect, but I was, I was like, ah, so maybe a little too strong. <laughs> Success. So you, know, you know how it is. No, you yeah. Know, events are not. They're not. No matter how much you try to plan perfectly, it will not happen. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our job is to create solutions when because problems are gonna be there regardless. Non-stop. Whether it's the bride's fault, whether it's you know one of the guys uh, you know stepped on the floor and ripped uh, the vinyl. Who knows? Like, and our our job is to make sure that by the time the event starts, problem solved. Yeah. You know, and that's really what makes us stand out out of the crowd. Okay. Well, good. Well, so he has a one stop shop for everything, which we'll discuss more. How he even got started into that, but tell us, like, you're from Florida, actually Miami, to be exact. Born and raised in Miami, um, and I, you know when when I started. First of all, if you're Latino and you're in Miami, you just a- a- American, you could be anything. You know that Miami is a city of party. Oh, for it sure. Is, it's a city of. It's a, sure. it's, we call it La Farandula. So, <laughs> so you know, literally, me and my friends when we were younger, we would hop in the car. I just got my license, and we would just go around the block, and we'll go and just just go into parties. It's so true. Like, it, that just that was our culture. Like, it, and it was. For the most part, okay. People would say, oh, I'll come here, whatever, I don't care. Because that's the vibe in Miami. It's mm-hmm. this constant, constant party. Well, funny story, my best friend's dad owned a record store, which back then when, the, when there were CDs, it was a CD store. So oh, wow. he would sell CDs and the clients would say, hey, do you have DJs? Remember how we talked a little earlier yeah. about the Ora Loca thing? Yeah. Because they provided also Ora Loca, like yeah. the guys on stilts. Same concept. So I started with him. I was like, okay, well, if you got the music, you don't have the lights. I'll get the lighting stuff and we'll start doing. I was 14 years old. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mind you. <laughs> so if you're asking me I have how, how far back I go at 14, I'm 38. So it's like. You just gave your age everywhere. <laughs> So like, <laughs> girls might have probably the issue with the, with the age, but I don't think I should. As a matter of fact, um, I, I feel it shows like, wisdom. Feel like, it shows I growth. Not, I feel like I'm at my best. Um, That's awesome. At this age, because number one, wisdom, experience. Right. And also, like, I, I, I never had a six pack before. Can I say that? <laughs> I never. So like I, I learned how to how to like master my body at this age, because 
I, I, number one, I didn't have time. When I was developing the business, I didn't have time to to take care of myself because you know how many hours you have to put in with a website, everything with into this, your business, that. right? When when it's when it's in like uh, growth growth mode, you really don't have time for anything else, and you have to kind of make a decision. Okay, am I going to focus on my? Because uh, you know when you work out, you get tired, right? Yeah. I don't know where, but you know, someone had mentioned that that your body is like a battery. And and if you if you use it heavily, How much fuel physically, you've been using, you, get, you go, you know. So and and I and I, and I agree with that because because I I can feel the difference. I'll go to the gym and train, and then I'll get to the house and I'm trying to work on something like a mix or something for whatever party I have coming in the weekend, and I'll get so like cloudy in my head. Then I found out I got some blow work done like a year ago. Come to find out that your body's chemistry changes after thirty, after you you know like in your thirty fives as a man. You lose testosterone. That's crazy. Oh my god. Yeah. So so I had a on top of work and on top of dealing with life and, and testosterone. Yeah. So I didn't even know that. So they recommended me to do a therapy of testosterone, whatever. Yeah. I started doing that, and it changed me completely. Like completely changed me. My energy levels are woof through the roof. Um. So so yes, ages is, is great in one way. Yeah. And then you have to also like apply, you know, whatever else you need to do to to get the job done as far as like being happy. Um, mental health is important, right? So uh, I was moody all the time, cloudy. So and I wanted to mention that, look, it's OK to go to, to, to the doctor and get your blood work done and get a thorough one to make sure that you are at your best. Because if you want any advice from me, as far as like you want to get into this industry, it's 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 a lot of work and you have to be at your best, at your peak. You have to take care of yourself. That's very important. So let's start there. If if you if you're not taking care of yourself and you might you might find yourself sh- cutting yourself short to the guy who who takes care of himself because you're running around you're carrying equipment you know this is on the, just the DJ side but it, everything you, you, most most likely you know if it's a photo booth or if it's whatever you're carrying stuff around and and not you're even always that, loading and unloading you're on your feet all the time yeah let's, let's leave it there just being on your feet for a long time is tiring um, and then your your attitude towards people right you have to be hey how's it going. Yeah, you yeah. have to be very chirpy. So, so to have that's all so that true. takes your energy from you, believe it or not. So, so I think that that's a that's a good start for advice. And then, like I said, I started at, at 14 doing just like the simple stuff like lighting. But I got to see like, okay, how the how it works, right? Those are mixer. You go left to right. The guy was using Walkmans. Remember those Walkman, the CD ones? Yeah. And he would I, go left to right. I'm like, oh, that's how you do I it. I got a whole history lesson on Walkmans uh, recently. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what that's what that's what that's all we had back then because it, there wasn't like a real c- culture of beyond the the record the big records and then yeah. once it got to CDs I was like okay so what do we do now so it was they had this CD thing but it wasn't like a it was just like a thing where you just press play you go left and right and it had pitch control and then how did they like did they even do mixes or anything like that it was just like songs you had literally to be a DJ back then you had to know how to count. So you would know that songs are, are, are based out of, out of measurements. And then you have to break the song in on the fourth count or the eighth count, 16th, whichever, whichever one worked for you, depending on what you were doing. Um, I didn't know that. You know, I just I, I, I saw it and then I was like, OK, I, I like I like the vibe. I like being in the party. You know, the girls are, hey, you know, they're like, oh, OK, this is cool. All right. I'm playing music. I'm playing a song that they like and they're giving me a hey. So, you know, like I was like, OK, I, I like this world. And it wasn't because of the girls. It's because of the vibe, like the energy, the ambiance. Happy. Yeah. Happy. And that's what I fell in love with, with with partying. You fall in love with with being in, in everyone's best moment almost like yeah. it's almost like your wedding it's probably gonna be one of your best moments yeah your daughter's keen says or, or if you had a daughter you know or keen says or a birthday yeah. but just anything like that so that's what really made me fall in love with the actual um industry of of, of djing then later on um I, 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 you know, I wanted to experiment in the world of different things like real estate. You know, you, you try different things out. And I think that- like, because I think um, to add to it, uh, it's like you always knew you were creative. Right. But then you're also like, wait, what if I do more of this or that? Like, I think the main thing when you are ever entering into the any business or even like entering the creative world, you're like, wait, there's more to me though. Like maybe I'm good at this business thing. Maybe I'm this, maybe I could try real estate. Maybe I could become this, but there's always that creative call. I feel mm. like that drags you in. Well, that's what my sister told me later on. So I'll, I'll tell you the process because, you know, for, forget about all that because before I even realized anything about creativity, you, you're just looking for ident- identification. 
yeah. uh, you know, as an adole adolescent, you're looking for identification. You want to identify with something, right? Um, so I had no idea what I wanted to do. I tried. I mean, I worked at a bakery. I got fired from there because I, I was I was like, you know, not paying attention or I, I don't know what they wanted me to do, but they didn't work out. Um, from there, I did office jobs, and and there I connected. You know, I I I got to, I got experience with Word, Microsoft Word, and all these things come into play later on when you get to the point where you're running this business, right? Because we yeah. need to have access and know how to do like charts and stuff like that for things that we have to take care of, uh, inventory, blah blah blah. Um, so so you know, I'm trying all these different things. I I did um, I, I even I even I was even break dancing with a crew. Like I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was for very some influenced. reason I could really see that. Yeah, I was breakdancing. I with, could see you like break. Dancing. That's how I, when I was <laughs> at that age, you know, fourteen. I, I was just starting the DJ. But I, before that, when I'm 12, 10, 11, I asked my mom I, in any party I was, I was doing things on the floor. I didn't even know what I was doing until I found out what breakdancing was, and I started doing that. But then I then I realized, okay, well, we're not making money off of this. So what am I doing? That's when I jumped in with my friend to do uh, a little DJ work. I did the lighting. I so I always liked lighting. I was fascinated by that. Like how how lighting changed the room and stuff like that that's where it transformed the that's space where it started with me it hit me there then the feel good music which was fun because there was a time where uh you know it was like djing was a was a real powerful in the culture it still is but not like it used to be right because run dmc you know like that was like that was really when a hip-hop was yeah. it now there would still be like heavy heavy break dancers that everybody was break dancing at that at that time when i was it was like actually 13, real 14. dancing at that time not like now yeah a, a lot of dancing a lot of good stuff was happening back then yeah a lot of music that i listen to today is still from back then because it's just better um i, I guess maybe from memories or whatnot but i i do want to say that you know being able to try out i i would say try out all the different things that you want to try out when you're young because then later on you can look back and say okay i connect with that and for me simply to answer all these questions it's just like i i just connected with that i connected with with djing um and it, and it made money so i think that's how i found my passion so it was through that so then let's talk a little bit so that that's your very very beginning then once you're out there and you're kind of figuring out, okay, like DJ, because like you said, it's it's absolutely runs a party. It, they always say music and food, key components to any party, you, like hands down. But once all of that, how did you get to the point of like, I want to be a business owner? Like, when did you get hit with that where I'm going to start my business? I'm going to leave like my corporate job. Mm -hmm. Because remember when I met you, you were still kind of working corporate and you dabbled into yeah. DJ world yeah. and you were like yeah. I'm starting my business and this so yeah. I, I think I said a lot and, and I, I didn't walk you through the timeline but I'll just give, do like a quick timeline of everything yeah. so 14 was when I when I met the world of, of DJing um, 17 I started uh, doing my own backyard parties just like learning through my my family just oh, doing all their every party that my family threw they were cutting it well I was married to a Colombian at the time yeah and I learned everything Colombian so I knew all I knew how to do a Colombian anything like South American Colombian salsa when you're in Miami like I said it's farandula so you know everything but I learned the most there on music guess what some guy just on MySpace remember MySpace yes on MySpace of course so. he's like oh you know he, he was an artist a reggaeton artist and he and he was like he was also up and coming and he goes to me I want you to go with me to a nightclub and I want you to be my DJ so he'll go over my house we'll rehearse his whatever songs he wanted to do and then from there you know he would say I got this date let's go and I'm here like okay fine because I'm trying to experiment I want to see yeah. what like how far in I can go one day I end up at a nightclub in Miami and the DJ doesn't show up and I had to practice all this time at, at the family parties so I'm like, this is my shot right here. I was like, you know, you know, it's like <laughs> this is my golden opportunity. Exactly. <laughs> they say it's better to be ready for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be ready for it. Yes. Right. So, so that's I, a wise model, right? That there. is a very wise model, right? So, I, I, and then that stuck with me. So I, that that was the that's that's the moment. Boy, I had been practicing in my house. I, like I had already got fidd fiddling with like production stuff. So I I've been taking instrumentals. Back then, it wasn't popular to get like a biggie hip hop beat and put like a Tego Caderon on it. Yeah. That's what I was doing at my house. I was I was scrambling with that. And I was just putting it away. I was like, oh, okay, one day, one day I got this. And then boom, the club. I got to DJ that night. I took the spot. I DJed probably an hour and I had the whole entire club going bananas. 
I did I did um Gwen Stefani yeah. can I have it like that you got it like that yeah and I did that with salte sino da 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 oh so you mix wow two genres I, I, yeah I did a, yeah I did that woof everybody went crazy I also got um Biggie the Biggie song um get money yeah which is saying uh, and I mixed that with um with a uh, we sing and dead also because I was it, they were big at that time. Yeah, and plus it, they, were, it, they it, came it, out of Miami yeah. too. Yeah, I, I forgot the I forgot which track it was, but it, man, it also hit. People were screaming, and that's when I knew like, I got this. I'm an artist. I I can do this. That's awesome. Yeah, they're really cool. And and that's when I realized okay, I, I want to do this for show. You know, yeah, like, like full time. I'm I'm all in. <laughs> and I and I didn't have like remind, mind you, I'm 17 years old. You know, I don't have. I don't have a lot, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling because I'm a father. I was already, I was like oh, yeah. at 17, I already, I think I was turning 18 and I had got my, my, my girl pregnant. And you know, that to me was like, that's the biggest thing. Like if, if you know what you want to do, you, you got to try to hold it down and not have kids or, or complicate yourself because you need the time. There's a lot of time that you have to put into a, a, any business, but really this business is rough because there's a lot of people doing do you, it. Do you think uh, being that you were so young and everything, it also gave you a sense more of like focus and motivation because you knew that you had a daughter that you had to like basically yeah but it's you know. but still it's impossible to do it with without like if i didn't have somebody supporting me and thank god to her family that they're like okay you know what you can stay at my house and 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 i'll help you out her mom was the best she gave me she helped me out a lot like, oh that's awesome you know, though yeah whatever happened between you me had and a support her, system I yeah i can't yeah. deny you know what help i got because with that help that helped me like do a lot of that, you know, staying up to five, six, seven in the morning, doing like some real like technology, you know, it's, have you seen what a mixer looks like with 13, 32 channels and all those? Yeah. It looks like, uh, something very like a spaceship where you have like to <laughs> maneuver yeah. and you're yeah. like, what? Yeah. So, Which a lot of people in the event industry, that's what we always say. I'm like, uh -huh. find an expert that knows that or get trained by an expert, but don't just go there and thinking that you're going to touch all these buttons <laughs> and it's going to work. Cause it's not the way yeah. you, you know, the educational factor is a big key in it. It's a big key in it. Yeah, exactly. So that's I had the time to do that. But still, I wasn't making much money because back then I didn't know how to price it. You, that's the biggest issue that people have right now. Yeah. They don't know how to price their services. That's that's a big issue because, oh, you know, I you, you go and, and then and then you find out later on. You're like, oh, my God, I charge way too little bit for that. Yeah. Later on, way later on. And then guess what? You have a, a clientele already. And that's the biggest fail ever is like starting off with the wrong pricing. So I think that researching your competition, researching the, the the products that they have, and then applying it to your business, and then also pricing at least near what competition has, you're 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 keeping the business alive. Because if you go out there and there's some people that do that, though, I know, they'll go all like, the time. Mm, yeah. That's the biggest battle that we have in the industry right now is people starting a business and then they go like way too low. Because then we can't we can't price the way we need to. Yeah. And the thing is that it entails a lot of work. Yeah. And and people these days they they because they want to own it so bad they want to own a business so bad they're like I don't care I'll work I'll work all night I won't sleep and I'll charge this much and what does it do to the to the to the real business the one that actually are pros at it it affects because yeah. people people obviously want to save the save the money yeah. and it's okay but at the end of the day. They circle right back around to us because we get the there, job done the right way. I was gonna say it's a quality service quality. because it's not just paying for this experience; it's paying for everything down to like right. setup, even right. um, you know the way that you even let's say. And I know this because I mean I've known you for a long time yeah. now. Any DJ that you send out, you make sure that it has a present a nice presentation. Right. It's not just yeah. some table with a mixer yeah, and a computer. Yeah, Tables, yeah. every everything's very well put together. Yeah. So that's it's, very important. It's still a challenge. Yeah, it's still a challenge because you know I, I have to tell them send me a picture of what you did. Your setup. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like okay, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like I, I like I'm hard on them because I I'm like listen. It's 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 it doesn't matter who the client is. We always have to have a reputation that everything is clean and put where it needs to go. That's awesome. You though. know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that it's that's that's a that's a big job. That's why like management is the key. I think that if you manage well, then then you'll be okay in any industry. Managing is the key. Um, but but again, now we're doing nightclubs. Right. Yeah. So like, the guys like the owners like, hey, you can work with me because yeah, yeah, he liked what he saw. I was responsible. I got there on time. I played the stuff. And then when we went to to the to the beach, well, he moved from downtown to the beach. So this was like some mega club in downtown. Yeah. Then he moved to to Washington Avenue 
which is like where all the clubs were at at the time as well. And I was working there as a manager. And now I went from DJ to DJ and manager. I was managing with him because he saw that I was on time. And then all the ideas that he wanted, I, I you made were them growing. Happen. Yeah, I was it. growing inside with him. He was he was being like my mentor. That's awesome. He was a really nice guy. Yeah, that's a key thing you said right there. Having a mentor in any business sector you go into is the most important thing because you learn so much. Right. And I always say that because the number one thing they'll ask me, it's like, oh, who'd you? I'm like, I had mentors. If It was other people that were willing to assist and help me when I didn't know the industry because no one, we don't just come out. Like I always say, like, we're not born with knowing everything, right? Or mm -hmm. grow. It's mm -hmm. like you find something you love and then there's like this mentor that's like, see something in you. And like actually inspires you and motivates you, which yeah. is a nice thing. So I had to go door to door to all the hotels on South Beach, right? I learned how to how to get to the decision maker or the person who was dealing with con concierge was the key. I would do folders and I would make like the the packages for spring break yeah. to to give to the concierge so that they were to give us clients from their hotel. We would come back and give them like five dollars per ticket or whatever. You know, so that it was like a, it was like a, like a, like a, like nice a cycle. Little, yeah. Now, now they didn't have to pay the client, the, the guests wouldn't have to pay anything. Yeah. We would still give them the $5 because when they got to the club, they were spending $150, $250, $250 a, a bottle. That's crazy. And plus whatever else happened there, yeah. you know, God knows. So, so it was business for him. And, but it was for me, it was like, that's where I got to learn. He would tell me how to do it. And then I, I would, I would get it done. But then I would see why, why it made sense because Obviously, it's a new club. He just started it. I, I, you know, I had to get people to, to bring traffic in. There's so much more to it. It's it, it gets into like they all were teaching me how to how to contract Sean Paul, how to contract like these big artists to come to the club and perform. Um, and that's, get people there and everything. That's where the management side of it started to come in for me. And then I and then I and then I started to look at the actual like lifestyle. Do I want to be at a nightclub till five in the morning? Do I want to continue to live that lifestyle? Yeah, because I was having panic attacks at some point because I wasn't sleeping well. And that's what they told me. I thought it was me. I thought I was like, I was just like getting like, maybe I, I drank too much or, 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 or something's wrong with me. The ambulance told me, if you keep calling us to come over because you're having panic attacks, it's, it, there has to be something wrong with what you're doing. So talk to me about your day. How does how does your week? So I explained to, this is the guy at the, at the, in the ambulance truck. And he's yeah. explaining it to me because things happen, you know? You need to have your, your 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 rest. You need your eight hours of sleep. And I wasn't getting that because I was a DJ. I was working way too late. And I, you know, I, there was a point where I didn't have a car. I would take the bus to go to to South Beach. And so like, guess what? I get paid at five in the morning at, at the club, and then I'm taking a bus. You were hustling, man. I was hustling always, always, always had my mind for it. Because I, I knew that that I didn't know where I was gonna land. I thought I was gonna be a producer. I really thought I was gonna be a, a producer for for these famous people. Yeah. Um. Whoever, English or Spanish, because I really liked it. Because I was doing a little production stuff. Like I said, when I went to the club, I played that song. We sing and there. Oh, everyone! I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I thought. Anyways, so from there, that's when I decided to um change change the game a little bit because i also realized that like okay if i if around that time i got divorced from my or separated from my wife and then uh, at the time then i realized okay i'm gonna start a new relationship right i'm gonna i'm gonna go date i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna like i i need that because like, you know you, you don't want to get crazy right yeah because it's easy to get crazy in the club <laughs> yeah so 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 um as, as I realized when I saw found the girls that I actually would would consider like okay that's something that I would use as girlfriend material guess what they would they wouldn't like me except my, my my lifestyle because I'm working at the nightclub till five in the morning yeah. so it didn't work out it didn't work out for me that's when I decided to do private pro parties private parties was like the way to go for me because I still liked it yeah but then you know but we, again you have to start from something zero because you know, your basics first started like from learning the ropes mm -hmm. in every sense of it. Mm -hmm. And then kind of like, okay, now I'm, cause it's true, like being out till five in the morning, like you get burned out from it. Totally, I'm telling like, you I had panic attacks. I didn't even know, I never had that in my life. I didn't know where it came from. And then they told me that once I corrected it, yeah. gone. And it's like, oh my God, like your body can fail. So you have to take care of it. That's why I say, take care of yourself. Yeah, and also it's like readjusting. And I, and I, and it, I think it's such a, a testament to it because Anyone who starts off, I think, very young or even like just like new in the industry, mm -hmm. you're like hustling. You're giving it all you have. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's someone's chasing you. And this is all you can do, right? Mm -hmm. But then you're like, wait, I can now get a little bit more flexible. Now this is a time that I have to consider and say, what am I doing? Like, what kind of business am I going to be? How many hours do I want to work? Am I going to do this full time, part time? So 
you get to this point. So then yeah. tell me how finally the business came about then. So that's a very good point. The, the, the point of the jobs, right? Because what am I going to do as my career, right? What am I going to do all week? Yeah. Where am I going to go? So, you know, when I'm, I, I left Miami, so I, after the breakup between me and my wife and then, and the club, I think it you was, like broke up with the club. I, I, you know what it was? <laughs> yeah. It was the, um, when the, when the, when the real estate bubble bursted. Okay. Right. Because as, as I was doing the club, I was working during the week in, in a real estate, uh, a loan officer, I was working with loan officers. It was a it was a lending company, okay. right? But then the bubble bursted, and all these lending companies were dropping like flies. Bah, 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 bah. And then the industry of real estate was like, whew, like you remember, you remember that? Yeah. And that it was, was a big it hasn't happened again. Not that big, not that bad. Yeah. Um, because these big banks got bailed out, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is this is not good. This, I mean, you know, I had I was already taking real estate school. I was already like getting all everything ready to get the license for real estate, and I was like, oh my god, like I don't like this. Like I don't like being on this side of the bar. Yeah. You know, like like when when you when you're out partying and you you got a girl next to you and you're spending all your money. I'm like, I don't like being on this side of the bar. I want to be on the DJ side. Like, I, I just knew already there that, like, as I was going out, I was making money. Yeah. But but I, I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to, if I want to do You're like, I here. miss the creative side. I miss the freedom, the, the environment. Man. Because I think, especially, and you know, you know this, you're DJing, you feed off the energy. When people get, like, right. wild and you see them smile and, like, live it up. Right. It, like... It feels so good. You're like, yeah. wow, I'm doing amazing. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely a high there. There's a high in in knowing what to do and really controlling controlling the crowd with yeah. with with your art because the art the art is how you how you how you get to the point to the end to the party. Um, because in the beginning, you know, an, an event it's not it's not all party unless the client says, oh, I want a party from the beginning to the end. But actually, there's a buildup. You got the you got the cocktail hour, which is something like chill, groovy, fun, kind of like bar music, and then you get yourself into like a like a you know you I I always recommend an intimate moment like oh hi guys thank you for coming to our party, hope you guys enjoy it's like a speech part, and then yeah. then you come into like a dinner. Yeah. So 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 you know there's there's different uh, points of a party that um, you know the dinner part is the is the chill part, and then after dinner. Boom! You can break it up. You can break the ice off with singing, singing "Happy Birthday" if it's a birthday party, or you know, it, 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 you have to basically other... be able to know and read the room. Right, exactly. Because you it ultimately are like holding the baton responsible for how this party is going to turn. Yeah, out. you know what you know what does it's a lot of though? pressure. Yeah, you know what sucks though when you have a, a client that that thinks they that that they want it a certain way and you know it's not going to work. Yeah, that's that's when you have to like really really uh, 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 like what I call create uh, director's license. Like I've, I've literally changed things around even on planners sometimes because I'm like, it's, it's not going to work. I know it. I know it's not going to work. I, um, I'm not going to say that I go against what planners say. Cause I don't, what I'm saying is that uh, I'll have a plan B ready for if it doesn't work. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like for example, like we had a, we had a cocktail hour one time where they wanted the guests to come through a long hallway and she wanted like, 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 like space sounds. Right. What? But oh, like, like, you know, like, oh, okay. it was, like a it was a part of her theme there was some characters concept. involved, you know, like, oh. like kind of like, like sci fi. Exactly. OK. But it gets creepy. Right. Yeah. It wasn't Halloween. This was yeah. just a corporate event. So so that when I heard the sounds and I was putting it together, I was like, this is not going to sound right. Let me add a little background to I'll, I'll put the sounds. Let as me create want. layers and for so it. Then, so then the day of the event, you know, I, 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 can, I just explained it to her. Like, look, I listen to the sounds. It does sound cool, but you need something to hype up the moment because this is all about energy. Everything in life is energy, right? Yeah. How the how the vibe is with your your person when you walk outside, how you portray life is really all about energy. Yeah. Okay. If you live your life like lazy, then your energy is down. You know, if you live your life up, then, you know, you're moving forward and you're going to be probably prone to being successful. Yeah. You know, or is it, is it prone to, to yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just... Yeah. Yeah. I think we're on the right chart. All right. So now we're in West Palm Beach, right? We moved out of Miami and. You and left the party capital. West, yeah, I did. I did. And let me tell you, it was, it was. It, it was rough. Me. Oh, I know. Not that it was rough, but it definitely was a, was a difference. Like, I, I, there's a transition involved. I'm sorry. I different. I moved from Miami. Like, what, remember I told you this like a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a transition that oh, happens sure. because you're around 
there's always something happening in Miami, it's, whether it's an art gallery it's, event. It's, it's there's people. events every day. It's beautiful people. It's beautiful people, beautiful energy. Everything is, is just different. Like when you go to like West Palm Beach, it's not that there no one's beautiful. You're ready to settle down. Care, people don't look, people don't care about that. You, you're ready to settle down. They're more, they're more chilled. Yeah. And I wasn't ready to settle down. I just wanted to change. I just wanted to sometimes like, let's talk about the bad part about Miami, right? Because if, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't wake up, you're going to be in every single bar, every single party, every single day. And then 10 years will pass. And I, have, I years. still have friends that are from when I was in high school that haven't left that environment. Right. So then guess well, what did you do? You, you just wasted 15 years of your life and you're not doing yeah. anything with it. So I, I just think that maybe that's what I needed because I was so deep in there. Yeah. And I had so many connections that I was like, okay, let me step out. Let me clear my mind. My mom already lived in West Palm Beach. So I was like, let me, I'll stay with her for, I couldn't even stay with her for more than two months because I, I, I you know, you want your privacy. Yeah. I'm not bringing girls to my mom's house. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, I like, you know, yeah, cause I was at that age. I just got divorced. Imagine like, yeah. oh, you're going crazy. But it's um, really real. It's true. Yeah, it's, it's real. It's real. Um, I was working at Bradley's. So, you know, where Bradley's is yes. it's at the end of Clematis. Mm -hmm. And I was doing like, I was still doing the thing and I, I was, and I just kept Kept getting more to the conclusion that I, I don't want to do nightclubs because girls wouldn't take me serious. And then when I would go into nightclubs and girls would do where we're getting close to me, it was like too, it was too crazy. Like it was like there, everybody wanted to date you. Oh, they can do the new guy in town. And then it was yeah. just like too much. So I just wanted to kind of get, before I got crazy, I, I jumped out and I was like, okay, I'm going to do a DJ business for private because I love it. It's not like, it's not like, you know, it's not really, I just want to make a career out of it, but something that I can be with someone. Yeah. That's around you that. You thought time. about like a future, like, it, and it's really realistic in this in this business. It's like that's what I think causes a lot of people to become entrepreneurs and business owners. Mm -hmm. The flexibility that there is with you managing your hours, yeah. instead of let's say you are working at a club or anything like that, mm -hmm. you're working crazy hours. Even the holidays, like it might be overtime that time, you know that time frame and stuff. So it's something to consider. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of you need capital. Capital is important when you're doing this business because there's a lot of things that you have to purchase. And you know more than anybody that if you have two events, they're never the same. It's different. Every everybody wants time. something different and everyone wants, you know. So then how do you how do you how do you create the difference between you and everybody else in the industry? That's the question you need to ask yourself when you want to start a business. Because is that what you asked yourself when you were starting your business? Absolutely. Too? It's, a, it's the first question I said. Like, how am I going to impact the community? How can I how can I better what everyone else is doing right now? Number one, I already knew I had the music. Because you bring Miami music to West Palm Beach, you're you're, you're the man, yeah. right? Let's be honest. The <laughs> format in West Palm Beach is not the same as the format in Miami. Correct. It just is you, and it's a also, different culture. Let's be real. You can't bring a Miami DJ to Club Ivy, for example. Right now, Club Ivy is is the like what Roombas was yeah. in West Palm Beach, which is probably like the only one that really stood the longest. Um, Miami DJs don't work well there because there's a lot of like, for example, Central American culture and they want to hear their, their side of the, of the music as well. And, and Miami yeah. doesn't play that. Miami yeah. just goes straight like into, you know, um, more mainstream yeah. versus being more like broad on, on the format as how they play the music. That is, so that make sense? So true. So true. So, so, so that's, that, so you have to understand that too. I had to learn that the hard way. I never played anything, uh, Mexican until I moved to West Palm beach. And now I know how to play mostly all the, even Honduras. I know how to play. I know how to play like pretty much all Punta. Right. Um, so, so it was really good for me to be, to be able to like get a, like a humbled, you become humbled, right? Because yeah. you, you're like, realize that, okay, well, if I want to make money in this industry, I'm going to have to learn how to play also for Mexican families. Yeah. Also for Hondurians. There's, there's a lot. And here. they have a specific need and want because it's so true. Like, right. You can't just take a DJ, and put like exactly what you said, a Miami DJ, and put him into let's say a quinceañera that is like mainly for Latin American I've done it. culture. It doesn't work because <laughs> they will not sit; they won't dance. They're sitting there. They're yeah, just, they're, they're, I, they'll get upset. Yeah. So I, I've had that scenario play off before with one of my guys from Miami, and you know, it, it was unfortunate because the, the the daughter was the one picking the music. She picked nothing of of their with culture. Parents, yeah. She wanted what Miami was. That's that was the confusion. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it wasn't that bad because they understood, you know, we yeah. made it clear, but, but now we know that we have to be ready for, for that. For, so, if, so let's say the daughter wants one thing, you gotta be ready with the other regardless. That's, that was the lesson yeah. out of that. So we took care of that. So going forward, we didn't have that issue anymore. Um, so you started doing for, you said private parties, 
Mm-hmm. So it was, it was just you, right? This is before you even had the whole team and everything. Right, because the idea is before you, you, you add people to your team, you have to fill your calendar. That's the first step. Say that again, because I think that is a golden thing, which you just said. Yeah. Before you go and hire a full team, you need to first make sure you're getting booked and busy. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that would be your sign. You know that you can quit your day job when you're booked out for the whole year. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you, if you, at least you can, you can, you can scramble with it, you know, you can play yeah. with it. Not to say that that's what I did. Cause I didn't do that. I kept the day job while I was completely booked throughout the whole year. But, um, it worked out for me because the kind of work that I was doing wasn't that difficult. Yeah. Um, but definitely was a challenge. It was a, it was a, that's where the health thing came in, right? Because you have to spend eight hours on a job. Then you have to spend another probably four to five, six, seven, sometimes even eight hours. So you're doing 16 hours every day, building websites, yeah. getting it right, getting it right. Because there's, it's, it, back then when you wanted to do a website, they would charge you $2,500. Yeah. I mean, that was a big thing back then. Yeah. Um, even, even $800 was a lot, you know? So, so, so the website thing, you know, you end up having to do everything yourself. Yeah. And that's really where, where it comes down to, oh, sorry. So, it, so what it comes down to is that you have to do everything yourself. And when you're starting a business and, and you need to make sure that if you want to succeed, uh, your calendar is full. So once you, so you're in this year, you're getting booked and busy and you're still working your other job. When eventually did you end up quitting? Like, when did you say, I'm just, this is full time. I think that's the hardest, the hardest uh, question to answer because you never really know when, when it, when it's time to jump the gun. Um, because at the same time you have a job and you're making money, you're, there's money coming in. You have more money to buy stuff that you want to buy, you know. So it's like money is power. At uh, when it comes down to growth, money is power. So you, so you you want to do everything you can to make the money, um, but also like at the same time, you 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 want to make sure that um, if you were to leave your job. If you can still manage your lifestyle and you can still also do so, you have to like at the same time just like. Being you evaluate. a evaluate. Yeah, you have to evaluate big time. Yeah, I, I think that's that's probably a, that's a pretty good question because I, I'll be honest with you, I I quit when I had to quit. I I had no choice. Like literally, I was against the wall. I had events on Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. It, it, I couldn't get no more PTO. It was yeah. a wrap. It was a wrap oh, for me. When you hit your PTO. If I didn't quit, I would have gotten fired. And I'd rather leave on good terms because I had a good relationship with my with my my job yeah. like, during the week. Um, I knew the job wasn't for me. But I had friends there, you know, and I would do all their events, and it was it was great, and they helped me out big time. So I can't take away from that. But I'll tell you one thing: um, I had no choice, <laughs> literally. Like I like you know what? Here's something crazy. When I quit my, I didn't plan this. When I quit my day job, my last day was on a Thursday, and I got a letter on Friday that I was off child support with my first child. So like that was a major one for me. That was a win, yeah. and I was like, okay. So my daughter, by the way. I give her everything and yeah. it's, it's, you're never off child support. You're always on child support, yeah. you know, like, it's not like, oh yeah. yeah, I'm free. I don't have to pay. No, I got her a car, like all the, whatever she needs, I give it to her. She knows it. But, but, but the stress of having the, the government t- tap into your money, every, every, any father could tell you, yeah. any father would tell you this, you know, getting, getting the government involved in how much money you make is pretty annoying. Like, it's just not like yeah. nobody wants to have no one fiddling with your money and giving it to somebody and who knows what they do with it. Yeah. So, so that's where, that's where like I, I felt the relief, you know, I was like, okay, now I don't have to worry about presenting my, how much I make in court. I can put that I make a lot of money and I can buy the house that I want because yeah. I, ultimately that's the goal, right? Yeah. We all want to have a nice house, a nice car, and then obviously, you know, have time. Yeah. And that's really what also like I learned um, about when I let go of the job, like having some more time. And literally I spent like a whole year in bed, Netflix and chill. Like I, I couldn't, I, I just needed to catch up. And I was like, I had, I had to get cortisone shots. Like we're talking about straight hustling. It would be DJ Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Thursday, sometimes oh Wednesdays, God, really? Tuesdays. And then by the time I got Non-stop. to Sunday, I had, I had my, I had my rotator cuff irritated. You're constantly carrying things because you have equipment and stuff like this. It's, it's a lot to it. It's not just like, oh yeah, I show up and make music. Okay, moral of the story, kids. If you're going to get into this business, you have to love it. You have to love it. Because if, if you don't love what you do, you're, you're really, you're really going to suffer. You're going to suffer big time. Yeah. Uh, if you love what you do, you'll suffer, but it doesn't feel like work. It's crazy. So th- this is why I say 
if you're doing this business, if you're going for the industry, if you're going for this kind of thing, it's because you love it, because you love it. Don't do it because of the money, because money is great, but not when it comes to all the work that it, that it entails. I can tell you right now, people will get into this industry and they'll be like, oh, my God, I forgot that, you know, because they're like, it's, it's too much or they don't do great. They don't do great at it because I don't put that extra energy into it. And I think that's very important uh, for this industry. You have to give it your best. And I, the people I work with directly, they're all very passionate about it. Like they'll spend the extra, you know, hundred dollars to get the, that whatever piece that they need to make that, that, that decoration look good. Or the photographer will give you that extra hour. If he knows he can get that shot because the sun's going to come down. Just to, like, that's what you need. You need yeah. to understand that, that, that passionate people in your crew is key to the success of the group. Absolutely. Hey, event designer, to you listening or watching, have you ever wanted to find the latest products to have in inventory? Well, look no further. Event Decor Direct is your one-stop shop to get all the material you need from fabric to linens to ceiling drape, hardware, and so much more. All you have to use is a special discount code, I would uncut 11 to get 11% off your purchase. So make sure to use that code. And thank you so much to Event Decor Direct. What has been, because I mean, now at this point you have your business and like you said, you had no choice and you had to leave the other company. I had to. What was some of the most memorable events that you were like, that solidified, like uh -huh. I made the right decision? All right. Uh, well, as far as as far as DJing for me, uh, it was when I started working with uh, the mega yachts in, in Bayfront Park because it didn't start off like that. It didn't start off. OK, I'll get to it. Nati Natasha, Amazon Prime. Amazon video. When when I got the call for that, you were geeking out. I was straight up like, "What?" I was like, "I'm working for uh, for Amazon." And, and you know, thank God for for the people who brought me in. You know, um, CT Hospitality Group, um, Carlos Trivino. You know, these are these are Colombians that they they they've been working with um, with yachts in, in the industry in Colombia, and then they brought that over to Miami, and they I, I guess dominated because those are the ones that I really see working over there in those mega yachts. Um, you know, I started as a DJ, but I, I study, I study and I want more. I study and I want more because I want to be that professional that everybody comes to, you know, so you have to well, educate that's because yourself. you never stop learning. And also the more, you know, the more you are valuable and you also are able to charge. That's what I mean. Like it's that val it's clients are paying for value. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're in safe hands and they could trust you because you're an expert at what you do. Right. Right. So, so, so what, what can I offer the client that, and that you can say, oh, well, he's doing exactly what the other DJs are doing. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I can tell you. I can show you how. For example, uh, in a DJ package, you have the the DJ that that gets to the party, puts two speakers, and puts dance lights. Okay, cool, cool beans. Um, but what about the the DJ that comes in, puts the the, the sound system that applies to your party as f based on the the amount of sound and the acoustics of of the space that he's playing at? Because if you're gonna do a backyard party, you can't take a rinky dinky speaker and expect to have good sound. It doesn't work like that. You'll hear something, but it's not gonna be a good sound. And if you care about that, then you need to talk to me. Number two, lighting. Lighting it comes in various ways. From factory, you can have a, a, a fixture for DJing because they make them that way because not everybody is, you don't have to be a, a, a wizard to be a DJ uh, or do lighting for DJing because you just put the thing on auto and it does all that. Moving heads. Right. So, you know, I, I took the time to learn how to, how to control the lights with a computer to do light shows that, for example, when the person, uh, let's say the guest of honor comes into the room, I push a button and the whole room strobes, including the up lights, including the dance lights, things like that. Those are very, that's very important for creating drama throughout the party because you want to feel like a superstar. So like there's different things that you can do, like set different designs for different moments. So in, in, in the lighting world, when you're a light designer, you, there's something called scenes, right? Mm -hmm. So they say when people come into the room from a cocktail hour at a wedding, there's supposed to be a relaxed, romantic setting for the first dance, for all that pretty stuff. So that's a scene, right? Mm -hmm. You can pick between gold up lights. You can have, uh, let's say, um, you can have gold um, flower shape kind of um, prisms mm -hmm. shooting on the sides of the wall or the dance floor. Th those things are are what you call um, vibes, right? Yeah. Like you, you, you want to create like vibes like same thing with music you're also created with lighting um ambiance is probably the better word so so when you're creating the ambiance for the moment you know this is art 
you have to be you have to design you have to know what you're doing and to make that look or create that vibe if it's fancy you gotta you can create a fancy vibe using champagne tones or gold you know some people like the dark the deep amber what they call amber so it's just like at the end of the day that's what's going to set the tone for when people walk into the room that first impression then you have the moment where the the um, couple comes into the room let's say they're getting married the grand, grand, grand entrance, grand entrance correct. Yeah. they're coming into the grand entrance and then all of a sudden we're, we're having a, a, a celebrative moment right because it's going to be fun we want people to cheer them on as they come in they're being introduced then right after that it gets romantic right so for the moment that they came in we're going to go up on the roller coaster and we're going to create the drama for for that moment so we're going to do the strobing of the room Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Ah, and everyone's cheering. Ah. You even do the spark, the cold sparks. You do like a bunch of the use, clouds. Yeah, like you, yeah, yeah there's yeah. many things. That's all part of the art. It's all part of the production. Definitely cold sparks. You can use low lane clouds, but that all comes with each each step. So you have to understand that. So now you you hear what I'm saying. You're like, okay, well, well, okay, then it's not just a rinky dinky DJ. It's not just coming in and putting lights. You have to know what you're doing. And I had already done all this by the time I got to Amazon. And Amazon Video, Amazon Prime. You um, learned music. the ropes and everything. I already knew. And then you got Hawaii. that call from Amazon, and you were like, "No, actually." You probably muted it for a second. You're like, "What?" It was. It was. It was an Amazon that called me. It was. It's the planner, but the planner knew that I was a good DJ, and he knew that I. I he can see on my social yeah. media because social media is important. That I was. I was posting things like how to control lights, and I was doing all these shows. He's like, "You think you can do this?" Amazon. I didn't even find out it was Amazon until the end. Really? They don't tell you until you get there. So imagine how surprised that I wasn't like, oh, yeah, oh, it's, it's not. Because if, if I found out that it was Amazon Prime, Amazon Video, and, and, and Nati Natasha, I probably would have sold my truck for $10,000 and bought a whole other bunch of stuff. But <laughs> what I had was sufficient because I had I had the control. I like how you were honest about that because it's so true. Like, you're like, oh, my God, I, it's for this client. Forget this stuff I have. I need to let me sell this, this, and this and get new because I need to come with the latest. But... It was good that they didn't tell you because you had already what you needed. Well, come to find out, come to find out that I I, I don't think I could have used a better setup than for what I charged for what I did. Yeah. I, I don't think I could have used a better setup. I literally did an awesome job. Like the lighting came out perfect. Amazon wanted to use like a hot pink because her her show on Amazon was based on uh, Everybody Loves Nati, which yeah. is I think it's still there. Um and they had those color tones. Oh. So I, he just told me what to do. And I'm like, doo, 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 doo. I'm controlling the whole the whole room, changing the colors, doing everything that needs to be done. Yeah. DJ Africa was there. Uh, Alex Sensation. Um, everybody. Marco, the comedian. Yeah. I mean, uh, Lele Pons. I'm talking about everybody was there. So mind you, my, my, my whole crew, we're all like, Goo goo gaga over everybody that's in there, and yeah. and then like it, it's it's fun. So this makes this this made everything different for me because now we're coming from a guy who's being a DJ to a guy who's being in charge of like you know LED wall, uh, uh you know you're the, being the, in the charge roster, of the whole production, the roster, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, after that event, because it was successful, um, I became the audiovisual director for him because he's like, you know what, you're gonna be my audiovisuals guy. I was like, okay, Amazing. cool, I'll take the challenge. And then from there, it was like, okay, turn up. Because now I got to learn production side. And then when I opened up the oh, the door to Pandora on the production side, that's when I was like, okay, um, I got to go to school. Because it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of weird, you know, concepts. It's, and technology is always changing and, and influencing. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what I wanted to say is that technology always changes. So you have to continuously go back and re-educate. So that's another thing you got to get ready for. So education, wanna, education, education, education. Educate, educate yourself. Educate um, yourself. If Iowa uh, Institute provides education, you might as well just come get your education here. You, you'll learn a lot. You'll have a lot of people coming in here, uh, uh, explain to you things that maybe you didn't even think about. So it's always It'll save you money too because... Yes. I didn't, like I always say that like I didn't like when I was uh, there was never a design school so I had to go through a different route like the whole fashion side, but then when I would do events I would lose money because I didn't know better. Yeah. So sometimes not having the education costs you. It costs you. Yeah, it'll cost <laughs> you definitely. Um, and and it will save you from a lot of mistakes as well. So at least getting the basic the the, the structure the fundamental of the fundamentals right. It's good to get that from some somewhere that that um that already does it. Right. It's already it's already in there. So there's already information about that. It just saves you time, which is which is what we, we don't yeah. have these days. Right. <laughs> we don't have time. It's always you're always working. So you got to find a way to create time for yourself and for your family. So I started this conversation with take care of yourself. And now my next major point is going to be 
uh, time with your family because I think that that balance is important. You have to find a way to balance yourself out. So you got to prepare yourself to work hard in the beginning. Forget about family time. That's gone. I haven't seen, I haven't, I hadn't seen my family. I want to say in five to six years, no family events. I was working every weekend. I was putting. Especially when you're in the event industry, the holidays are prime time. Forget it. Forget it. It's a wrap. I, every New Year's, I'm busy. Every New Year's, I'm doing something. And that's okay. I, I don't mind because I know eventually, I, you know, it'll it'll all uh, uh, it'll all come back to me having my team run the show. And but I like it. I like being there. There's new projects sometimes that come up, and then you want to be a part of it. So sometimes I, I you know, I I I I, I kind of want to be with my family, but most of the time, I just know that they they understand that I have to work. Um, but um, sure, shoot the next question. Okay, so before we go into that, I like to do a little hot seat round. Oh, where you pick some questions and you have to answer them honestly and truthfully. So they're all folded in here. Let me make sure. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, my bad, you guys. The hair is there. Okay. What's the most Unexpected or bizarre event theme or request you've ever received from a client? Um, unexpected. Or most bizarre or wildest request. I, I don't think I've had I've had something like that far off. I can tell you what has happened to me working at a nightclub one time. <laughs> I was, you know, we were DJing every weekend. And, you know, I was managing, I was paying, I was paying off the promoters. I, I had like a lot of position in there. One day I walk in there and, um, I, I usually DJ, there's two rooms, there's the main room and there's a the back room and I, I would DJ in the back room. That's, yeah. that's the room that had like house and reggaeton. Um, but one day I, I walked into a swingers party back there. Oh, and wow. and yeah, I had to. So it was like a lot of a lot of girls jumping around on different guys, and it was just really weird because it, then like I just you were just like what what what, what am I witnessing here? And I, I never got to like you know anything like orgy or anything like yeah. that because uh, you know, but it was it was definitely close, and that was like the most bizarre thing ever because you're like why? I can imagine walking into them being like a little you, like what is going just on? Just a regular job, you know, just like a regular club, like just with you know a, a chic, you know, a chicer space. And it was all like dark wood. It was it's a very sexy place, by the way. It was like yeah. all it was the, the design of the place was it's called. So I guess that would be one of the most bizarre events for sure. Oh, oh yeah. the bizarrest event for sure. Everything else has just been like, oh, you know, I want to do like just a theme, and it was it's never been like nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So next one. Let's go with the next one. Yeah, that the, what stood out was that one. So I sorry I had to say it. <laughs> no, you're good. All right. No, What's the most significant lesson or piece of advice you've received in your personal life that has had a, a lasting impact on you? Um, the most significant lesson that I've had definitely, um, I would say from personal experience, is um, is is definitely looking in the mirror and making sure that you take care of your health, because that I mean, even mental health, like there's there, there was a lot of imbalances that I just I didn't know. Yeah. You know, you know, like sometimes like the people who receive the most um, of the worst of you is the closest ones to you. Does that make any That's sense? That's so true. You know what I mean? And I think that like I, I never took the time to 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 look at, at, at w why I was feeling a certain way. In other words, go get checked, check your blood, check your check uh, all your levels, make sure that you're good. And try to be the and try to focus on being the best version of yourself because it does the difference in your life. Not just not just in your relationships, not just in business. Remember, your 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 first impression to a to a, a customer or even a, a comrade or a vendor or someone that's going to be your fellow um, worker. You know, it's it's your physical. That's that's your business card. Mm -hmm. That's that's your best business card, I think. Um, and then obviously what you can handle. So I think that would be the lesson that I would say is that I that I'm I. I could apply to myself now because I feel the difference as far as like what I've been doing until now. Good. Next. Um, well, actually, before you do that one, I actually wanted to ask you because you said a big thing. Now you have a whole team, which it is really hard to find a reliable team mm. of people and everything. And you you've hustled so much. And I remember you it was like you were like a one man show. But one thing is I, I would ask you, I'm like, hey, do you know, you know, Mamba player or whatever? You'd be like, yes, I have a con you've always been very well networked. Like, yeah, um, 
So, so I, I think it, it comes down to organization. Um, when you've dealt, when you deal with high volume clients and you have like a lot of people calling you, you get the same questions almost all the time. Yeah. So eventually you're like, wait, why don't I just do a catalog? <laughs> why don't I just yeah. have the clients myself? Yeah. So I eventually do start going out. You start getting business cards and you put them in your pocket. Yeah. Instead of just be like, oh, you're out of, sometimes you're so like distracted just yeah. with whatever's going on that you don't think like, oh, that's network. Yeah. Right. So I think that's key. Obviously, networking is key, uh, regardless if you do it physically or if you do it online. You got to connect. You have to connect. This is a business of connection. And if you don't connect, then you're, you're going to be limited to your, your 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 advancements as far as like growth. So you have to make sure you connect to people. You got to make sure that um, you're also providing them with something to have your information as well, whether it's those phone things that tap and you get the, you know, the, 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 the person's tap card. Yeah. yeah, those tap cards or, or business cards um, that you're on social media, that you have all, all your information on there. If you're in this industry, you have to have an Instagram. People who are in this industry that I know that don't have a Facebook or an Instagram, I don't know how they do it. I really don't because at the end of the day, there's so much more for you to get as far as work. Um, but again, there's the reason why the word old school exists. And some people work old school and they just do it through through networking physically and, and they're, and they're happy. They're so physically going out there and doing it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's either, but like I always say, like uh, the, the main thing in this business is you have to go out there and get it. Like no one's going to come knocking at your door saying, I have a hundred thousand dollars for this wedding please do it for me like please DJ. like no one comes just knocking at your door and you're just like sitting there it mm -hmm. usually comes from you being out there and someone recommended you like a planner or a designer or a caterer or it's that someone's found your instagram page or facebook page it takes you doing the legwork in order to get to that right point. so so then so let's get down to to how the team was was developed because i think that Another, a huge lesson, if I can tell anybody anything, if you're starting out, if you're starting out, uh, how, how to, to develop your team, right? First of all, you can't do everything yourself. As much as you want to, you cannot do everything yourself. So what you're going to have to do is find the right people to work with. And that's probably one of the biggest challenges. But once you get, you know, even if it's a small, small group, at least you're taking work off of yourself. So let's say you want to do DJing. Be the best DJ you can be. And once you feel like you've mastered it, then replicate yourself and show the, the rest of the team what to do. Train. Train. Training. Exactly. Replicate yourself. Train them. Get them to up to par. You create the standards. It's your business. So you you make the shot. You call the shots. And then from there, then you can say, okay, this 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 department is, is set. I'm I'm in, I'm in the front. I have a team that I rely on. Now let's go to the next department. What do clients need? Oh, it's Ora Loca? All right. So let's find the best drummer, the best guy on stilts. Let's find who, everybody that we need. So that way we can we can run it a certain way. And guess what? We're going to go back to the DJ side. And we're going to have the best DJ out of all five, six, seven, eight DJs. Have them make the Ora Loca mix. So that way this company, this side over here on this label, is doing the best job that they can. And then It's guess all interconnected. It's, it's, it's all interconnected. It's right. But... You can't do everything yourself, right? I can't be the DJ and the guy on the stilts and, and the decorator at the same time. It's impossible. So you have to have a team. Whether or not it's it's you in control of everything or not, you still at least hook up with the, with people that you can rely on that will be there for you. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. If you have the client, you, you can deal. You can deal with the client directly. Planners already know there's a respect to this business that you have to have. If if you're bringing in the client, they don't have to touch your client. They can make they 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 can communicate. They can do everything for the client at the party, but they don't necessarily have to be, you know, sticking their fingers in, in the contact information and stuff like that. Or like just loyalty. I think loyalty is the key because I've, it's happened to me before. I've been at a party with a planner and the planner is, is doing, doing a good job. Yeah. But the, the client is super in love with our work. And they're like, you know what? Let me get your business card. That's a, that's a rough one because you like business. But then you're working with a planner. And if you know the rules of 101 Loyalty. of respect, you shouldn't take the card. You should yeah. say, talk to the planner yeah. because the pl planner brought you in. It's like that respect and loyalty because at the end of the day, it, it just happens. This yeah. business, the, the, the more business you get, the more like you realize this, like, how do I explain it? And, and I literally, did, it was at a networking event. Everyone knows everyone. Like, right. They're like connected in some way. Right. Like the more business you get and the more right. you know people. It, and it's crazy to think that how like so-and-so knows this person. And it's like 
you don't want to be you don't want to burn bridges basically yeah you yeah, don't yeah. want to do it, that it, it, it's 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 complicated um in a sense because you know you you want especially when you're starting out you're like you're so thirsty for oh, for sure for business but at the same time it's like if you start off good it's like relationships right like let's say you you get with someone and the way that you did it was you took a, they were already in a relationship and then you broke that relationship off. You're like, bringing in the same kind bad. of energy. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. yeah like that, it's just something it's the same that, thing with the business uh, relationship. Abuela me dijo. Abuela me dijo. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like there's consejos, <laughs> Abuela, right? There's, yeah. there's some, so some true. advice that you'll get from your grandparents. Like whatever starts off bad ends bad, things like that. So that's how it is in business. You don't want to burn those bridges. I think that starting line is you be passionate about what you do. Try to be the best at it. And then you can focus on the rest of it. Meanwhile, you can hook up with the people around you who are probably like on the same page or at least, you know, can do a good job. And I think that after that, then you can start to expand your you can expand your wings and try different things, because here's here's the thing. A DJ doesn't make the same that a, produ a producer makes yeah. right? an event producer. So how did I end up being an event producer now? Then that I have the DJ company. I have the Ola Loca team now. Um, we have the photo booth that which I actually infused that with the DJ because it makes sense. Um, the decor, the photography. So how does it work now? So how are you not like the direct DJ and then you're over here and you're, and you're doing the events? Well, because because I, 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 I did that process. I I know who's doing each team and, I, and we're all on the same page and like we're a, loyal. You put like a lead person in each team. Exactly. That can manage the department because like you said, you can't do it alone. There's right. no way. Right. So, okay. So then we can get into a whole other topic, which is how does everybody make money? Right. Because. Yeah. How. That's right? the golden question. How do you. Yeah. So how does how does it work? Well, everybody has their package. Right. If you're working with the best. And this is my concept. If you're working with the best of the best. You shouldn't be charging the cheapest. Yeah. Right. So then you have to sit with your team. You have to communicate and make sure that everybody's happy with how much they're charging. Yeah. Right. And then you work out a deal. So we all cross commission each other if oh. Sergio's doing all the sales Sergio makes the most money but if Abdiel is doing sales he makes the money for the sales that he does off of everybody down down the line so we're, we try to do incentives between us yeah. only in the group yeah. right so that way there's motivation to sell yeah if Sergio's making all the sales and you guys are making all the, if I'm, I'm closing three 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 to five thousand dollar deals for for photography and video yeah. for him he's chilling yeah. So it doesn't hurt him to pay me, you know, whatever commission it, it, that we that we set, because obviously I'm making him money. It's like free, free having a Google account and spending 500 bucks a month on Google. Which I think, honestly, that's something so smart that um, I remember early on you did. I'll never forget. Like, I think it was an event. This is when I was more active because I consider myself a little bit of a retired designer. Yeah, but you're, you're there. <laughs> you're you're, you're still, at Iowa Global. I still, yeah, <laughs> I still, yeah, I'll still send you some clients when they call, but I remember we had sat down and we had this meeting. I always say that's why building those vendor relationships. And you mm -hmm. went over your packages with me mm -hmm. and you're like, this is this, this is this much. And then from this, this is how much commission you could make if you sell the grand package. Right. And because I was like planning and designing all the events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it worked out great. And yeah. that's something that I think a lot of people in the business do, but it takes you building those relationships with your vendors yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then and then we can get go even further into like how does it work with taxes, right? Yeah. Like this is this gets real. This this is where the development of the company becomes something that you have to be a master at because you have to know how to imagine. How did you learn though? How did like how you, you 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 just you you study you talk you get to the right people you 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 it's you, a lot. you know you know I had to close I had to close when I started the DJ business I had to shut it down and rename and revamp everything because I didn't had to have the taxes right because you're gonna make mistakes yeah you're gonna make mistakes and you have to you have to be able to to swallow it that's why I say you can get beat down in this business and you can feel like I want to give up but, but the don't. only thing that's gonna keep you on is your passion that you like that you love it you like what you're doing yeah so it's at the end of the day that's what it was for me i i didn't give up i i kept attacking it and then i and then the the, the modeling is important too right because because of my corporate job i learned about culture how to create culture in, in your in your company right and it, i don't i don't feel like it's my company 
I feel like it's our company, yeah. right? But the, the culture that I try to create with everybody is that everybody gets a chance to to make money if they if it's their party. So they feel they feel special. they all their logos go on a, on my truck. Like I just put all the logos on the truck, so they feel like you know we're a group. It's like a uh, it's a big entity, a family entity it's, more than exactly, just like one exactly. person. Exactly. So let's say so let's let's talk about this. What happens when when uh, I bring in a, a, an event and we have uh let's say one two three four five five vendors on, on the same contract how do you deal with taxes on that yeah what do you do all right then i'll tell you so so basically so this is a good lesson tell us tell this, us this is way too deep for you guys but but you know I'll, I'll help you explain when you're doing business let's say you you go and do a, a party for a hotel right right immediately they're going to ask you for a w9 right so if everybody has a business and they're in the group they got to give me their w9 i process the invoice with with the taxes at the end of the year, the like I've made forty thousand for one, fifty thousand for one, thirty thousand for one, but that doesn't apply to me because with the W nine I can show that I paid them out that, so they're in charge of the, all those taxes. Gotcha. So that's where like this is where it gets a little corporate and kind of like more complicated because of that. But 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 it's but doable. That's what's important though at the end of the day to have a structure at the I, beginning. I, yeah. Like you already know the way it works, so yeah. that way. You're not just like, oh, yeah, let me just pay you this. And you don't even know where your money's going. Right, right, right. So, I, I, right. Because you're doing uh, independent contracting, you don't have to worry about workers' compensation. Yeah. Because you're literally just subcontracting. So, but Which the way is essentially what you're doing. Right? Essentially, exactly. That's the that's the whole idea. <laughs> so then, basically, you get to protect yourself with the client. They're like, oh, I got a one stop shop. So the idea is that as long as everyone understands what, why, you know, people will freak out if you came up to them like, oh, I made you forty thousand dollars. Here's your Here's your here's your your taxes. I gotta pay taxes on forty thousand dollars. Duh, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I'm not gonna pay them, right? I didn't make that money. Where's the money? You went to Mexico, right? The last thing you spent fifteen. I went. Oh, and the, the Audi you got out out there. Yeah, that's from the forty thousand. So you you're gonna have to pay taxes on that. Yeah. So that that's people like once they realize that. Then, then it's like, okay, well, now I know what I'm doing. So it's like you do that with each other and then you educate each other. And that's how you become strong because a lot of these other people don't know how to do that. So educate yourself. Of course, like I said, take care of yourself physically. And, and of course, be passionate and a very big word. And this is the word of the day. Be loyal to your team. Be loyal to your people. Because at the end of the day, you're going to meet again at down the line. I promise you that <laughs> events are crazy. You never know who you see. I'll see Lucy at we, we popped up at an event. How long between the time that we did an event to the time that we just did an event together? Years. Years. I, I'm, right? You Years. always find the person down the line. So why not just have Years. a good reputation? Years. And you I'll know? even see you like, I'll attend an event and you're there like, like again but to me like same thing like you said to me like all the like vendor relationships i consider them like friends like you know like yeah. like in in sergio even uh even when i was like not even doing you i remember you posted like oh shout out to lucy for saving this event it was like a bought bad mitzvah so i mean like you we're like all like that's what i love about this industry right. I think, like you said the passion yeah but it's just like the friendships and connections you make to me are like amazing yeah like before rolling the camera we were laughing talking about how i'm gonna be playing my wedding i'm like well you know i'm gonna be cashing in right like Sergio, get ready you're gonna uh, be dj <laughs> for real no no I, I, that would be an honor to be a, a part of your, your special day just give me the day with time because i'm get booked <laughs> booked and busy yeah so before we close out the segment on today's podcast which honestly you've given so many golden nuggets um i guess tell us a little bit of how do you see the changes in your business being impacted by technology like what do you what do you see next well uh as For far as party group. as far as as far as the future goes right now um what makes us exclusive is that we look for the things that uh, other other companies just don't do and it's right in their face so so part of the the whole thing about uh exclusive party group is that we're exclusive right so we, we're trying to right now break a lot of records we're trying to fo our focus is not to make the most money our focus is to be the most creative so the one who is the most creative is the one who can attract more eyes as far as like somebody looking for something that just just not what you see every day um we're the ones to call so so th there's a lot of projects that we're working on one of them that we just released was the exclusive cocktail hour um you know how like you see those big heads with characters yeah like the bad bunny yeah, and the, the carol, bunny g and carol g and... um taylor swift is coming now we're gonna have taylor swift <laughs> 
um, there's, so there's there's um, Drake also, and yeah. there's Pitbull. So th we're talking about down the spectrum because it started Latin and then it, and now it's going English. Yeah. Um. So w we're trying to to attack the the market with Ora Locas, which is crazy hour in English. In English, because a lot of clients, you know, they're American. They do like the Ora Loca carnival thing going. It's a whole, it's like, um, let's explain a little bit for those of you who don't know what Ora Loca is. But Ora Loca is like the perfect icebreaker to start the event um, in terms of getting the party started with either accessories, still walkers, the big bobbleheads, or what do they call them? Like the, the. Yeah, big head characters. Big head characters. Yeah. That's where you bust out like people, they get in a conga. Like it's a group setting that gets the party started so yeah so so ora loca was originated uh in venezuela as a as a festive uh they call it the party within the party yeah. so so basically it's 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 not necessarily how how it kicks off the party it could be at the end some they, they, some they, people they, do do it their way is the last hour yeah it's the last it's a crazy the hour. latin but in american i see that they do it's a perfect icebreaker no i like it for icebreaking yeah. i'm with you on that um I, I do agree with the fact that um we sh you should go hard in the beginning because a lot of people tend to leave by the time the end of the night comes yeah. You know, depending on what family it is, but Americans they they eat cake, they're out. They're yeah, like, once a the cake cuts, it's like everyone is out like the door. <laughs> yeah, so so basically, um, there's a lot of art out there. There's stilts, there's characters, there's uh, just so many things coming out. I don't know if any of you have been to a concert, but I I'll give you a gem. So we've been working on this um, technology mm -hmm. that uh, when you go to a concert, you get you get these bracelets. And they they're controlled by the by the production. Oh my god, I love they them. Change yeah. colors. So we're applying that now to to parties. So basically, awesome. the client has the option to get the bracelet um, with their initials. It like or lights the name. up and stuff and depending up, on the song right. with the beat. Can you imagine the first dance? Oh Cut the lights, low lane cloud, people raise their hands and it's sparkling all over the room. That's so cool. So we're we're see we're we're breaking we're looking for creative things to affect the party. Plus, it's not like you're just using it for that because then later on I could with the, when you can control that from the DJ booth and the program and the computer, you can literally like when the light show is shooting blue, you can have the bracelet shooting blue and then in, in deep dark black, you'll have the name of the quinceañera, the sweet 16er, the the couple. So tell me how many companies right now that you guys know that are doing that right now. I no one. So. I didn't think so. So, no so that, this, this is it. Other than the concerts, but now, that's so smart to bring that to the mainstream of events. Right, because people want that. that they want the difference. They want something different. So, um, exclusive cocktail hour is something that we're doing with cocktail hours. It's like, obviously, we can't afford to pay for Bad Bunny to be at your cocktail hour, right? We all agree with that. So, so, but what about if we had like a, a character that was so good looking and just looks so nice at a party that it attracts us? It's, it's funny. It's, it's awesome. But to have an immersive experience with maybe a, a something that people like Even really like enjoy. Those Taylor Swift fans to have a Taylor Swift cocktail hour yeah. where, where like in the beginning of the party, people are coming to take photos. So it includes a photo booth. It includes the backdrop to Taylor Swift's album. It's going to include music, um, obviously relating to her greatest hits or maybe whatever the client wants, however they want it mixed. But we really want to focus on like the vibe. And if it's Taylor Swift, let it be how many songs does she have? How many remixes? How There's so much cool stuff you can do with the cocktail hour, um, including the photo booth. So just having the, the the character there, chilling by the booth, having the music running. Can you imagine the album there, like a big backdrop of the album? Um, that's what makes that cocktail hour exclusive. And guess what? It's probably 200 bucks more than what it would cost to have a musician play. It's not even that expensive. So th this is where I'm, where I'm getting at. My goal as my focus and see why I'm it's not just DJ anymore. Now I can focus on the experience. And that's really where the key is for us. That's where like really where, where we, we want to put our foot down. It's kind of like your signature. It's, it's I mean, yeah, our signature. Yeah. Like how like especially like with lighting. Like for example, like on our parties, when, when when we start the party, we do white scanning lights side to side. So you you feel like you're at a show, like you're coming into something that's gonna happen. So those those are our signature um moves that we do for for our parties. Things that people see at, at almost all our shows. Because because that's how we kick it off. You don't know what to expect after that. But you know that a uh, white light scanning is like something's coming. Yeah. So we, so then now our, our goal is to see what the client needs and then kind of put that together so that from the moment that they walk into their party, they're ha having a great time. But more than that, they're the star of the show. Yeah. So that's why our, 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 our mantra is exclusive party group setting the stage for lasting memories because really it's all about how we set it up how we put it together how creative we are and and that's and that now i have all this knowledge on dj all this knowledge on photo booths 
between all the mistakes, things that don't work, things that work, <laughs> uh, lenses, lighting. You, you'd be surprised, you know, because you have podcasts, yeah. how, like you have to have the right lighting. There's so many aspects to this, even the decorations, like that you, you have to, you have to have a team that yeah, knows what no they're way. doing and is ready and willing to do things creatively with you. There's no way that it, it's done without a team. Literally, um, mm -hmm. for New Year's, which I had contacted you about getting um, the, the bar. bartender. Yeah. And I was laughing because my family, obviously, it, it was just for my family. And I was like, I really miss my teammates in a wall. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I miss a wall and I miss my team because I'm like, I'm telling people what to do. And it's just like, it's like you just have a team. Yeah. They know. No, but the know. worst part is, is that like also like look at the calendar days and look at the day that you called me and like and I, not that I couldn't get it because I got it. Yeah. But it, but it, but you know everyone's like trying, trying to play the card like oh if you want to call me last minute here this is the price. Oh no for sure you know for I mean? sure so it's yeah. Like, it's like it's like ah uh, and and I understand and especially for like the holidays and stuff but it's still it's still nice like I you know like I was like oh, okay it's fine but if you still were able to come through you're like yeah I can get you this person yeah, yeah thank last God last minute. Um, so it works with that, but you have any closing quote or anything that you would like to leave with our listeners or viewers that you feel really resonates with you or that can help them possibly? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, fly straight, you know, uh, if you're going to be in the industry, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're an example to your team, um, that whatever you do, you're passionate about it. And most importantly to me is that you just try to be the best at that first. Don't do everything at the same time. It's, it's, it's never going to be perfect. Once. Right. Don't try to do everything at once. Just focus on one thing at a time. Take your time. Um, most definitely, you know, make contacts, make friends, network, educate yourself. That's very important. And then the biggest one to me is even though I did sacrifice myself, take care of yourself because mental health, physical health, that's the most important thing that you that you need to to be the, your best version of yourself in, in any, any any aspect of your life. Thank you. That was You're amazing. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you so much, Sergio. And thank you to all of you that are watching and are listening on I Would Uncut. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast episode. Make sure to comment and like and share this video. And bye. Cheers.